South Sudan, Africa's youngest state, and one that has been on the headlines for all the wrong reasons. Recent skirmishes have tainted the outward optimism that had been portrayed. The skirmishes in Juba had a heavy bearing not only on the residents of Juba, but its visitors, investors who are in Juba. <laughs> this is Rosemary, a Kenyan by birth, who moved to Juba around 2007-2008. I left Kenya after the post-violence because I lost my business. And when I watched my television one day, I, I saw the South Sudanese ambassador telling people to come and invest in South Sudan. So from that news, that's, what, uh, that's when I made up my mind to come to South Sudan. And Rosemary then moved to Juba and started several businesses under the name Tintola. But several years later, they stand in ruins. Ziko rooms kuminambili, self-contained. She walks us through the ordeal starting with the damage in the rooms. Inside, signs of devastation, broken glass, beds, and looters did not even spare the toilets. But that's not all. We had a wardrobes, fans, and the nets. Uh, so they took, like in this room, they have taken everything. Yeah, they have taken all the bed, uh, they've taken the mattresses, and the wardrobe was here. And the chair, all they have taken. In the complex, Rosemary had put up an entertainment spot as well. Apo tulikuwa na fridge mbili, upright, ya SSBL na KBL, na chest freezer, na stock, ya pombe zote. Pandi tulikuwa na TV, ya 40 inches. Watu walikuwa wanakaa pandani waki watch football every weekend. Indeed, there has been a lot of loss here at Ten Tola Restaurant, and I want us to continue to take a look at some parts of this very large investment that was made here by a Kenyan Rosemary. This is what used to be a saloon. Let's quickly take you around. Now, in, in case you wanted to have a massage, it's very hot here in southern Sudan, and you wanted just to relax and have a massage, this is where you could have had it. Of course, that is no longer the situation because this place was equally raided. What Rosemary is grateful for is that she was not home on the fateful day. You see, she lives right above the salon. But this room was not spared as well. <laughs> her documents strewn all over. Her belongings lost. But despite it all, She's ready to pick up the pieces. Um, now, Rosemary, you've lost um, quite a considerable amount of money. What next? Are you going to abandon this? Is this it for you, or what is the, your future plans for this place? It's very difficult, but we are going to continue because at is, as, as it is, we have a, a contract of 10 years in this place. Again, we have a loan which we are servicing with the KCB. So if we abandon, we cannot... Uh, pay our loan back. So we are thinking we, we, to retain the place so that we can continue. Is there hope for her? Well, the Kenyan embassy in South Sudan says there is. Ambassador Leshore says a committee has been formed to help the situation. The Minister for Foreign Affairs, Ambassador Amina Mohamed, uh, formed an interministerial committee to look into legal aspects on how Kenyans uh, who have lost property, who have lost life, can be compensated. Uh, the committee is still uh, working on, on, on those, uh, uh, on the paper which is going to be presented to the cabinet. There are many Kenyans living in South Sudan, a total of 15,000, this after the crisis. And the embassy now says that owing to the fluid situation in the region, it is key to observe a certain code of conduct, as it were. We have informed them that should a situation like what happened in December 15, 16 arise again, the first place of call is the embassy. They should come to the embassy because we have uh, put systems in place. 
Rosemary, what she can do is now hope that South Sudan will know peace and that investors like herself can go back and help Africa's youngest child mature economically and more as she earns a decent living. Willis Raburu, Citizen TV, Juba, South Sudan.